What's up, wrestling car collectors? Welcome to another edition of WTC TV, and I'm with the Wrestling Car Price Guide, Mr. Paul hey. Anon. How are you, sir? I'm good, brother. How are you? Nice to see you. You know, just living the, the life here with a 100 plus degree temperature every single day in the month of July, oh, June. Yeah, it's been gorgeous up here. You know, this is the time of year up here in Toronto where, you know, we get the extremes. We get the coldest of the cold and the hottest of the hot, but this time of year is perfect. Uh, it's just, it's brutal. I mean, uh, as, as we're recording this right now, it's like that. My water heater went out, so I've got people outside going and taking care of the water heater. Uh, but I don't envy them at all because right now it said it's 104 out. <laughs> and you're uh, you're going on holidays next week. So you're gonna I am. I'm yep. off from all of this. Yeah, I mean, generally I'll be, I'll be still on my phone checking things out, what's going sure. on kind of thing. But you're not going to see a whole lot of uh, updates to, uh, to WTC stuff. I, mean, I, gotta, no, I won't be bugging you unless something really big breaks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, in this, in this crazy world of wrestling cards right now, and what we have from 2021 into 2022, who knows? It could be anything. Yeah, exactly. But uh, so, we, July yeah. 2022, we got uh, a bunch of things to talk about, but I guess we should get announcements out of the way. Toprope.com and The National, maybe you'd start with Top Rope. What's the latest there? Not a whole lot to report, to be honest with you. I mean, we got, uh, we've got a few names that we want to announce, but contractually, we can't announce anything yet. You know, for those who don't know, uh, we're doing Top Rope Wrestling Con or Top Rope Con. Both of those names will take you to the same website, uh, be in Tampa, Florida on September 16th and 17th. Um, you know, we, we just have some names that we're waiting to announce and contractually, we can't do that yet. We have to have a certain what's time the, frame. What's the time out? Is it 90 days or something? Like some are 30 and yeah. some are 90. So we're coming, we're right around that 90, 90 day time frame. We're already within that time frame. Uh, but we're still kind of working with agents and, uh, trying to figure out, Hey, when can we do this? Well, they don't have their schedule yet. So we can't really make an announcement yet kind of thing. And, uh, some nonprofit organizations that are, you know, sponsoring some things that we want to be able to work with and uh, make those announcements. But that's cool. what's coming. So market calendar, September 16th, September 17th, and more details to follow on that. Yep. Yep. And, yep. Yep. Uh, on, on the same theme of, of uh, exciting places to be, we're a few weeks away from the national at the end of this month. Yeah. We will be there. And it's exciting for us, not just to bring wrestling cards, but just for us personally, for me, you, Chuck, to finally hang out. And it's yep. not just, hey, shake hands and off we go. We get to hang out for three days together, looking at cards and hanging out in the bars. And we'll get Chuck doing some slam dancing. And I know it's going to be a good time. God willing. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun yeah. there. We still don't have um, a final time for the um, for the May panel. It's still being worked out. We're gonna, there's going to be more details details on that. We're going to be um, tweeting that as as we find out more. And we've also just um, put together uh, that we're going to have a wrestling night dinner on the Thursday night in the National. And as for anybody that wants to join me, you, Chuck, and some of the Card Foundation podcast guys are going to be there at that time. Yeah, I did. I yeah. did uh, text the guys. It's like that. And they are interested in coming and definitely want to come and join uh, on that. So hopefully we'll have a lot of wrestling yeah, so, card collectors so, there. And there are quite a few people on Twitter that do interact with us that are uh, all sports guys that I speak with regularly. And we I've, I've tech, uh, DM'd a few of them and said, hey, looking forward to meeting in person. So that would be a nice night where we can invite a bunch of people that enjoy wrestling cards or have some sort of peripheral attachment to it um we'll uh, we'll get a nice place where we can have a space for our own we can hang out and uh and talk wrestling cards and have a few drinks and yeah we'll just uh we haven't picked out a restaurant yet but there's a lot to choose from there on the boardwalk there and um uh once we make those and uh figure that out we'll make those announcements on on social media yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll make sure that uh and and we'll be there as soon as we get there the the cameras will be flying you know they'll, they'll be running so we'll be letting you know what's going on we might do some of this kind of thing we'll be doing a lot of spot interviews with guys that have wrestling on the floor um and there's going to be a bunch of us so god knows what you're going to see us film over those three four days but i think it's going to be a lot of fun yeah. So, uh, yeah, you know, pay attention. Uh, we'll, we'll both, uh, both on the wrestling card price guide, uh, uh social media page and, and both for WTC. We'll, we'll make announcements on where we're going to meet and times like that. It's a, this is a BYOB type of event guys. Yep. So, <laughs> but still so. we're looking forward to meeting as many of you guys that are going to be in Atlantic city at the time. And, uh, yeah, let's party in Atlantic city and chat wrestling cards. That's right. So uh, let's move right into a uh, so review for the month of wrestling June, man. Cards. Yeah, yeah. So obviously the big news this month was uh, Panini Revolution. If you recall last month, the, the product had just dropped. So we really didn't know what we were in for. Um, and of course, coming off Prism, um, quite a change. Uh, before we get into Revolution, because we're going to dissect that a little more. Oh, yeah. Quickly mentioned some of the other sets that came out. 
uh, on the indie side, we had the um, GCW Dutch Math All Star Series Two. Yep. Um, yep. And we talked about that on the earlier GCW podcast or, or video where we talked mm-hmm. about that that was coming. So that hit and has been released. And then uh, Ignite did the prevent, uh, Presents Inferno, and you did that excellent video earlier this month with Kim, who. Uh, oh, she was awesome. She's fantastic because she's not only the promoter of wrestling, but she's a connoisseur of wrestling cards. She's been collecting cards since she was younger. She said on her show and she's been very supportive to the wrestling card hobby. So not only in the making of the cards and getting them to the collectors, but just being supportive of what we do and how we do it. And she's very appreciative of that. And uh, it goes like both ways. It was just fantastic uh, what she does. Uh, so she had a set come out. And the last one was the uh, Wrestling Revolver guys. They put out Swerve's House. And they've been pretty consistent in their indie releases. We talk about this often that there's, you know, there might not be a major release coming out every month, although with Panini and AEW, uh, you know, we're going to get quite a few. But there's always indie stuff coming out. There's always going to be two or three sets from somebody somewhere in the world that we're going to be able to talk about. But the big news, obviously, was uh, was Panini, um, the Revolution second release that came out. Um, right off the bat, we can talk about some of the prices. It, obviously, it didn't go through the roof like Prism. The biggest number was actually a uh, Randy Orton auto for like just under twenty five hundred bucks, and then from there, there was a couple of uh, goals or Galactics they called it a Rock and a Ronda, and those only thousand. So not the same snack bracket at all as Prism. We don't have any of the five figure sales. Um, Speaking about the product itself, and then I'll let you jump in, Tony. Sure. I, I want to talk about the um, putting together the master set and specifically the inserts, because this was something that was, you know, rather difficult to do on Revolution. That wasn't the case with the AEW. That wasn't the case with the Prism. And in fact, hasn't really been a problem with the tops releases. And when I say master set, just, just to uh, reiterate, it's the insert set, all the insert sets, plus the base set. Now, in this case, the base set was 150 cards. And I should say, by the way, thanks to you, sir, for doing the actual checklist card, uh, even Cardboard Connection didn't have it. You took the time to go out and figure out what all those cards were, plus all the inserts. Because I didn't, even when I put up for the price guide, I didn't know what the actual number of inserts were. And you went and found out what everyone was and checklisted them. So that made yeah, it was um, much, right, much easier right, for the hobby. So reminded me of old days. Tony on that, you know, um, tremendous well, amount of work. Reminded anyway, me of the old days of uh, putting checklists together. It's like that, yeah. got it, you know, I, I cracked yeah. open four boxes and sort of said, you know what? Okay, I've got pieces of it. Let's go out and finish the rest of it and uh, figure it all out. And it took a right. couple of days to get it done. But to, it's more, to my knowledge, even to this day, as the time of recording, like it, WGC is the only place that actually has a full so. checklist. Well, and, and that's what I'm getting to with this, this master set, because there's the 100 cards, but there's also an, an additional 50 cards numbered 101 to 150 that we've determined are quite a bit harder to get. Yep. And then yep. the inserts even more so, something like <clears throat> the ratio notes is crazy. And for me being a master set collector, it became fairly evident to me quite early in the game that, hey, where are all the, where are all the sets on eBay? And they weren't coming. A few guys had put up one to 100, but in seeing your checklist and being aware that there was 150, where, where, where are the additional cards? And um, we probably went three weeks into the month before Chuck was able to grab the first complete uh, set of 150 that came up. And to my knowledge, it's the only one <clears throat> that's come up so far on eBay. I managed to put it together in about four different stages, which is not good for me because the shipping costs, yeah, like I got to yeah. pay a hundred bucks more maybe than, than Chuck might know. I got a bunch of inserts as well, but nowhere it's close because you got 30 of the Vortex and 30 of the other ones. Um, and the die cut ones, I think there's only 10. And I maybe have a couple of dozen of those, but putting that complete master set together um, with the inserts and, and the 150 base cards is um, next to impossible. I mean, it's possible, but it's very difficult we were warned about being set collectors that it would be difficult for prism and it wasn't really no. um, same thing with uh, aw 2021 it wasn't difficult mm-hmm. but this was and i'm sure a lot of guys that broke cases and were you know i was talking to mike the cleaner and he 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 got a lot of stuff and i was asking him for certain pieces in that 101 to 150 range and a lot of them he didn't have surprisingly and i thought to myself no not surprisingly it's the way this one's collated so this is really the flip side of prism where the chase was at the top well you might say that the chase is maybe at the bottom of these and because of the difficulty of putting together this 150 card mass, mass uh, base set and the four insert sets i'm going to say that these are going to have a lot of value down the way you know down the road when we're looking back and saying well what base sets like you know you're you're close to getting your first base finish as well I think I'm, about, I'm about 11 cards short now. yeah I, I, yeah. I was 61 cards short in the beginning. Now if you put that up say the store was open now and you put that up for sale you've got to be charging 200 bucks for that set 
pretty close. 150 anyways. Yep. And I'm sure that's not the price point you want your sets to be at, but you know, that's what this one's going to be at. Yep. You know, it's kind of like that tops 2016 that was just very difficult to put together. So again, and it's an interesting discussion. Where are the set collectors? Is, is there as many of us? Because a few weeks ago on one of Zan's shows, he said, you know, he didn't know that many set collectors. I'm thinking, well, hang on, you know, two for sure. Yeah. And, well, that's and the, then, two, two out of the grand stream is not that many. Yeah, of course. And then on, on the last show that you did with him that I just watched this morning, he was talking about how in his eBay store, he's starting to sell a lot of chunks of base cards. And he's reasoning that these are set collectors. And I agree. And then, of course, there's guys like you that are buying it potentially to resell down the way. But um, I think there's a lot the, of guys who are buying. On the show that we did last night, for example, we're talking about, I said, oh, I've got a Chikara set as well now, Chuck. And then and he said, well, we might be the only two. And then we talked about the ECW and I don't have it. And I said, Chuck, you've got that set. Uh, who else has it? He says, I don't know. Um, and then, you know, I've got the only Panini. And perhaps Chuck and I are so far off on our own little island with all these sets that it's not representative of the hobby at all. I would have thought, you know, there's people like Nick, obviously, and that buy sets, but we've done it along the way. So maybe that's why I take it for granted that there's a lot of people out there that are trying to put together the master sets. And maybe there, there aren't that many, um, you know, relatively. Uh, that's why I was thinking, well, I, I caught on to it early. Why is no one else talking about this on Twitter? Or why am I not seeing, like I spoke to my two main suppliers and they said, there's no way. I can supply you that that set of one one fifty. And remember, I I, I texted mm -hmm. you that oh I've got a few a guy that's going to send me his list. That list ended up being gone. Like he didn't have any more to spare. So I'm thinking that how come no one's catching on to this? And I think that's probably because a lot of people weren't interested necessarily and in just setting aside the hundred and fifty and all those inserts. And it's for me a fairly new phenomenon because this hasn't happened. So mm -hmm. that's sort of my well here's uh, here's way. here's a main point to why that is the case that I think of most people, and maybe even including yourself, have simply overlooked and forgotten about. There's no retail of this product. It's strictly hobby. That's it. There's no right. e-packs. There's no online thing. There's no retail. There's no other, other things that we saw with Prism and what we saw with the AEW Upper Deck release. It's strictly hobby, therefore less. Right. And when you're right. only uh, getting a box, you know, that has you know, five cards per pack and eight packs per box. Yeah, it's like the and every every pack's going to have some kind of a parallel or some kind of a chase in it. So you're taking away from that, and you're only getting four, on average, about four base cards uh, in a pack. Right. And you're so, only getting eight you know, packs in a dozens, box. Dozens of boxes to get those 150 cards. Correct. And when those particular ones. Now, by the way, we've since been told that well, this is uh, this is a a revolution phenomena within Panini that in football and as well, they do do the 101 to 150 and they are, they're not variants, but they're harder to get. The, the sure. correlation on those is, is they're, 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 they're rarer, the, the odds aren't as great. So it was interesting to me that after all this talk about how set collectors would be put out by Prism and put out by the AW set we're talking about, it was really this one. And here I was a week ago thinking, I don't have a flip through for the price guide. Very rare that I don't have something within the first few weeks on its way. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and that hasn't been the case, but it's coming and, and it, it'll be ready as soon as the last few cards arrive up here. But um, that was my experience. Love the look of the cards, the ones that I have here. They look great. In my opinion, they're, they're, they're as good as P uh, uh, Prism. I like Lady, them better than Prism, actually. Yeah, you know, I, I wouldn't say better, but they're no worse, in my opinion. You know, for all the fuss that Prism bought, and I guess that's because that's their big brand. It's like mm -hmm. one of a transcendent or, or no, it's equivalent. It's, a, it's, a, it's their Topps Chrome. Yeah, well, Pr more than Topps Chrome, because Topps Chrome. Top, Chrome didn't sell for five figures. One True, but, but, but you neither, know what I'm saying. neither is Prism anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but we'll talk about that. But, um, true, true. I mean, we, we'll, we'll, we'll always refer to that magic week in April, though, those those five days when the wrestling card hobby just went. Oh, yeah. Well, and it was all just, to do uh, with it, it was a hype machine. With, yeah, that was all to do with prison type speculation. But um, interesting to me that uh, we don't have any really big number sales on the revolution, but uh, it's going to be a tough time for even someone like myself to put together all the insert sets. And uh, well, you let me know. I've got some that I could probably th go your way. I don't even know. Well, talk the about problem for me up here in Toronto is that it, it's it's difficult because to, to buy stuff piecemeal anymore, you know, like, well, I'm going to see you in a few weeks, sir. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'll of bring them. But, you know, and I've grumbled about this before, but really, you know, like when you guys are moving cards around the States, you're paying four or five bucks to ship. Yep. You get it up here. We're paying 18. So on a base card 
say I get three or four of them and I spend five, six bucks on the card, it's 18 bucks to ship. And I do that four times, right? Now, all of a sudden the math is I'm upside down on the set. You know what I mean? I won't be because it's going to sit here forever. And one day it's going to be worth a ton. But the idea is that, you know, my wall would probably be twice as large if it wasn't for the shipping problems that we've had over the last few years. Cause I've really had to curtail what I bring up and how I, how I bring it up. And, you know, even for you guys down there, I'm not aware of a lot of people that have been able to put together the master set of revolution and we're into the product for a month now. Um, so that speaks to what you said earlier about uh, it being limited because tops 2016 was the same thing. It wasn't a retail product, but um, yeah. So that was my experience with it. But once again, another home run, great, great, great set of cards. Great, uh, great roster. I yeah. Like I'm, I'm enjoying it. I like it. I'm, um, you know, putting together the base set just to have one for the store eventually here. And um, I don't even have, I don't have a base set of prism. That's going to be uh, never even tried. Never even right. tried. I got uh, the th th this was a this was affordable for me. I, yeah. I ended up buying a case of Revolution. Uh, I cracked open four, sold the other inner because uh, it's separated in two inner cases of eight. Right. Uh, and I uh, I sold one half of the inner case. I uh, the inner case and then uh, the other inner case. I took four boxes out of it eventually, and my local card shop took four boxes out of it as well. But in that entire case, you might not have put together a set. Probably, nah, probably not. You know, I know. You know uh, I think you might have gotten a one to a hundred. I think Mike, I think Mike's uh, opened up 10 boxes, didn't make a set. Um, yeah, and he has a lot, uh, lot, lots of stuff on the side. But again, if you wanted every base up to 150, which is what guys like Chuck and myself are after, and then to go after the inserts, it's entirely possible that I won't be able to put together the inserts. Hey, I, I, even, uh, I even went through like after my four boxes and getting pieces from other people that I've got coming in, I still don't have the first 100 cards. Which is odd to me because a few of those have sold. There's been a few sales of those. Um, but as far as I know, um, the bulk of what I need right now, the 11 cards, I think I need, uh, two cards that are less than a hundred. And then the rest are the other nine are, Oh, that reminds me, we should have talked about this offline, but Chikara, you said last night, you need some of those and I don't need any I of them. Next... What's that? I don't need any of them. You have the entire set. I only have the first 13. I don't care about collecting the rest of them. I, I don't care about collecting the whole set. Oh, okay. Cause yeah. we have a second set here. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't I care about. Totally forgot about. Yeah, I don't care anyway. about the whole set. I, I I have the first thirteen. Anyways, so that guys is a story on Revolution. If you're looking for your Galactics, your parallels, you're gonna get, you're gonna find those. The prices. You tell me on the Dexter Loomis stuff. Have you picked up any of the Revolution stuff? I, I have plenty. Yeah, but I have. I in my case did have a Galactic. Yeah. So now that was one how per was case. that price wise, Tony, compared to Prism. What I've looked at, nothing. I mean, I mean, it's, it's like, a, it's the bargain uh, bin type of stuff when it comes to comparing what Prism was initially going for. But right. comparative to what Prism's probably going for right now, probably still not in the same ballpark because I'm, I'm sure Color Blast are probably still going for quite a good money. Some are, yeah, for sure. Yeah. We've got Prism in our in our top index. We'll talk about that. Yeah. Bit. Where, where but, are the boxes at now? Are they under 400 yet? For, for Prism? Yeah. Right around 425 to 450 right now. And I suspect it's still going to go down further. I have been saying for a few weeks now that people forget what the suggested retail price in that product was when it first came out from Panini. And that was right. one, 150. Now, right. I don't think it's going to hit 150. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if it did, but I don't think it's going to hit 150, but it might settle in that 225 to 250 price you range. Think, do you think that a lot of people that haven't opened are going to be sitting on boxes that they're going to be upside down on? I think that there's a lot of boxes out there still to even uh, to purchase probably still. They printed the hell out of it. I know. And they're going to do that with everything, I think. I mean, knowing that they've, they've lost license whenever it well, comes. Just going apparently to not with through. Revolution. <laughs> well, <laughs> is it is it the number of boxes or is it the way they collated the product? There's, like you said, there's so few in each box. I mean, there's, you know. I imagine a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know that I've been offered, you know, I, I sold those boxes at, a, at, I still thought it was a good price for people. Um, I got offered boxes. I'll find out, I should be out find out tomorrow morning. I'll find out. Uh, what the new price is that I've been offered, but my last price was sixty-five dollars a box, and I thought it was below fifty on that. So no. it hasn't come down that low yet, but it's no. it uh, it's, it's going to it's going to probably hit in that fifty to fifty-five price point right. possibly. But right. I mean, it came out at a hundred and something dollars a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember. Yeah. I remember when we did our thing with the bunch of us. Mike's buddy was offering a deal at one and a quarter. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, he and then was, I, he I was sold was some stuff to people. Else. I said, Hey, I can, I can sell it to you guys delivered for like $90, like that or $91, yeah. whatever it was. And yeah, two weeks. I, I, yeah. I made like, you know, three bucks a box, you know, but then when you factor in shipping, I probably made a This didn't really happen with boxes <laughs> much when, when a box came out that it would 
fluctuate so so up and down. Like it was generally pretty consistent. You know, things were priced where they, were, you know, Chrome was priced more than other boxes, and of course, transcendent. But there wasn't this sort of not speculative, but sort of roller coastering of prices going up and then down that I recall. Yeah, we're, we're living in a market now in a world where we're now entering the post pandemic type thing where pandemic increased a lot of pricing sure, for whatever a, reason they may factors. have been. And yeah. now we're kind of getting back to the norm and yeah. people are still kind of speculating like, hey, maybe I can still get, you know, a high price for this. And they're quickly finding out, no, you can't. Yeah. Um, and I think people that's- People are going out again. Yeah, I think we're gonna go back to having our normal price point where, yeah, things might be a hundred bucks a box, 150 bucks a box. And then the it's not gonna be so great. It's not gonna be so great. And right. I think we're gonna kind of hit that that market where we were Makes beforehand, sense. but it may, I mean, that's kind of where I see it, but you know, right. What do I know? So before we get into pricing and stuff, let's a uh, couple of um, announcements about uh, new releases. We've got the uh, Spectrum products coming uh, yep. from um, AEW and we've got uh, Panini Select. Now the dates were July 15th for the Panini, but I already see that Steel City's pushed that back to August. And I think the release date for the Spectrum was the end of July. So guys, don't be surprised if we don't see anything for July and we're into August before we see the next two big releases. Um, because we're still, what, even though we're kind of in that, I keep saying post pandemic type of, uh, life now, things are still, uh, difficult to come by when it comes to supplies, whether it be plastics and printing yeah. paper and things like that. So there's still things that are sitting in containers, you know, on coasts like that. There's not enough employees apparently to go out there and, and well, there, there's uh, no question that, that binders and pages and stuff are more expensive sure. than, than what they were pre pandemic by double. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like if I want uh, the box of a hundred pages, it's roughly Canadian, about 35. So like 25 bucks US. And I used yeah. to be, a $15 I, used to, I used to get them for $11 a box. Yeah. You know, you know, so it's, it's, it's uh, that, that, that's all the new world. And, and there are a lot of external economic factors now, you know, gas is a five, five bucks a gallon down there sure. and inflation. <laughs> On a good day. Yeah. So there's all sorts of, you know, and up here in Canada too, same thing. We're having the same same economic uh, pressures. So that affects things as well. Now, you know, does that directly filter down to the prison box coming down? It, it might do, because, you know, we talk about um, our hobby and how we're, how things have gone down a little bit. And it depends on how you look at it. I mean, we, we have our index and, and we're going to talk about this a little more. We might as well get into it now. Yeah. What we do every month is we sort of track a few things that we look at, and that gives you and I a sort of idea of where we feel the wrestling card hobby is going based on the last couple of months now there are other things out there other places like obviously um card uh, card ladder is a big one very popular where you can go specifically into cards and they show trends and also we we're introduced to the beta version of the ebay tr uh, price tracker yep. uh, which is a phenomenal tool as well again it allows you to zero into the micro and type in someone in specific that you want to um, find out about and and they'll give you the data but we do this analysis sort of to get a sense of where where things are and um, i'm going to talk about something in a moment that's very interesting in the way you know numbers are, are different out there mm -hmm. so let's go let's go to our top sales of the month just to give a top sales top sales for june i feel like we have we need to have some kind of a bumper thing like a top sale top sale, top sale, top sale. yeah some sort of yeah maybe some sort of graphic or uh we're not that tech savvy over here people you got enough work to do that you need to be editing this stuff. I mean, you know, <laughs> we should just come out here, wrap, and be done with it quick. Anyways, uh, top sales for June. The number one happened early in the month. It was 1982 Andre, the Giant Wrestling All Star, BGS, Beckett graded nine, twelve thousand six hundred dollars um, Very respectable number. But Andre's the man. He's got the uh, record for the highest um, public uh, sale of all time, tied with Hulk Hogan for the Wrestling All Stars. And he also has the highest modern record for the Prism uh, Panini. Uh, at $15,100. Uh, <laughs> so there's Andre the Giant yet again, looming large, you know. Yep. Um, condolences, by the way, to Tim White, uh, Andre's, uh, Andre's friend and handler. I know that you knew Tim. Um, he'll, he'll, he'll be missed. Number two, 2019 Mr. McMahon Transcendent Auto, number to five, $5,500. I tweeted it the day after that happened to say, hey, you know, sometimes scandal was good, but uh, you know, no, no problem for Vince McMahon and the value of his stuff. There. I'm actually pretty surprised by this. It shows to the collector base on holding Mr. Uh, you know, Mr. McMahon, uh, Vince McMahon type uh, products, because we haven't seen him going through the previous months of all these records we've had. We haven't seen him in the top 10 in sales since January. Right. Uh, and, and, and you and I both believe that he's a sleeper character. 100%. And card is going to be, you know, going to be always in high demand 
I'm, I'm in the market. I've been in the market and I've just been too cheap about it. You know, I, had think, I, I think anything had that I you find right now, hundred bucks, I'd have one now. But, I think $5,500 on that right now is still cheap. I think, I think it's cheap. I think it is because uh, be. the, the day that man passes away, uh, yep. you, you put him in the same category as uh, what Andre is right now. And I think yep. those two are going to rival more than a Hulk Hogan. I think those two are going to rival for possibly. top sales. Possibly. And possibly more than the Rock. And we'll get to the Rock in a little bit. Um, number three in the month was 49.10 for a, a Prism Stone Cold Mojo autograph number 10. That's the highest Prism sale of the month, uh, as shown on 130 point. And that's pretty good because we talked about Steve Austin last month that how he's not a name that rolls off the tongue as easily as Hulk Hogan and The Rock and Andre for wrestling cards. But, but for, for two be. months in a row now, he's been in the top three. Correct. He, he was number two with that Cardinal card last month, and he's number three with that Prism. So there you go. Uh, number four is Ric Flair All-Star, PSA 8 for 3650. Uh, very respectable number there. Um, then we have a finest 2021 Roman Reigns Usos finest superfractor. Now those superfractors, the 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 goldest of the gold, if you will, yeah. that sold for 3586. They're always going to be in high demand. Yeah. Um, any superfractor of a big name. Um, now we get into the one that I wanted to why I alluded to card ladder before. Um, there was a sale of a 1998 rock image uh, rock autograph mm -hmm. for three thousand dollars and i got into a discussion with someone on twitter and he said no nothing is sold for three thousand dollars the best sale is 1400 so i went and i sent him the link that showed that it was three thousand dollars and showed a sewn on ebay on ebay mm -hmm. as well on watch watch count or 130 point as well yep. on watch count then he sent me back card ladder where that exact same card was showing 1400 bucks and i'm like hang on Everything else matched up card ladder to eBay, yeah. right? Except that one card. Um, I don't have an answer, you know, and I, you know, he, he sees what I saw and I see what he sees. Yeah. Neither of us are wrong. There it is. But I just wanted to raise that point that there are discrepancies between card ladder and eBay. Now is card ladder getting their data after the fact? And is it, cause we know sometimes buy it now is it takes a while to update. You might sure. see a low buy it now. And then, three, four hours later, but this is something that happened in the middle of the month, um, you know, several weeks ago. And it, it shows very clearly on eBay as being sold at that price. And the problem is, is that we do these shows based on these numbers. I mean, cause it's all we really have in black and white that we can sort of hang our hats on. But it was interesting to me that, oh fuck, you know, this guy's quite right. <laughs> Card ladder showing it at 1400, why? Um, so if anybody else knows about that, you know, are we missing something by going to uh, 130 point every month and not relying more on card ladder? Or are they in actual fact more reliable uh, than eBay themselves? And, and again, I got the same results on the price tracker, eBay, the 130 point, which I usually find to be the most accurate and the watch count all showed three grand, but card, la card ladder showed 1400. So uh, interessante, as they would say. <laughs> Was that... Uh... I don't, I don't know why that anomaly would be there, but that's a good question. So hopefully someone who's watching or listening can answer. Well, that. for guys that sort of do this every month and throw out numbers, we kind of want them to be right. You yeah. Know? But, you know, so that, that that's why. Well, you know, we're also in full transparency. We're letting people know that, hey, there's someone says it went for this price. And so we're yeah. not saying that our. our, our yeah, because I'm the first guy to say I'm wrong. And I'm the yeah. first guy to herald a big public sale or big private sale that goes public if we can get the number. Yep. More about that in a sec. Um, <laughs> 2022 Braun Breaker Prism Gold, number to 10, 27.50. So, you know, like these are numbers in Prism that we just didn't see in Revolution. So it still speaks to, you know, that despite the fact that there was dissension and there was a lot of opinions on both sides, you can't deny the numbers that the Prism product has, has gotten. These are real sales. I mean, I mean, the, I mean, the, and the price points have come down from what they were. We're sure not seeing have. a lot of five figure type cards. But like it's still 27.50 for a Braun Breaker. It's still, yeah, for a Braun Breaker, it's, it's still a, a you know, very like, respectable number. Uh, absolutely. A 2022 Gunter Prism uh, Black, one of one, new Intercontinental Champion, 2,500. And again, a one of one, so fair enough. But, you know, these are big numbers. Okay. Um, Randy Orton Revolution uh, Auto. Uh, this was the biggest number of Revolution on the month, uh, 2425. And I mentioned there was a few Galactics and things that sold for 1,000, but that's that was the big one. So we were talking about the... Um, Randy, Randy Orton Revolution autograph number to 10 was the biggest number of uh, Revolution of the new set that just came out, but uh, number nine on the month. Uh, yeah, um, actually number nine the month. Mm, for which month? Oh, or number 10 uh, for June. 
for June. Oh, you know what? Sorry, sorry. That's an update that you probably don't have on your list. Oh, God, yeah, because my file is a little bit older, I think. I, I right. told you, like, when you sent me the list, I go, yes, you know, we, you got, said, we, we got a few days. Something else might yes. sell. <laughs> yes, that one. Well, that was an important one not, not to miss because it, it was the biggest number. We were sitting at the Rock and uh, who was the other one? It was Rock and was it Ron, Ron Breaker. Uh, no, it was... Um, no, it was a Ronda and a Rock uh, Galactic sold for a thousand, and and they were sitting as a top number until that Randy sold, and it sold like with oh, right. 60, 60 bids or something like that. So a significant sale. Oh, right. Yeah, and then yeah. and then the last thing we have for twenty one fifty um, was nineteen eighty two Hulk Hogan wrestling all stars uh, Beckett nine. So, you know, again a good mix of of Prism of wrestling all stars of uh, Gold, you know, right across. So you know, no one's winning. Um, Let's not forget, you know, the 2006 Shawn Michaels card, the Chrome card that sold for 2000 or no, or no, because we've already, but we bumped something off. I'm sorry. My list yes. is older. You're right. My yeah, list that's is right. Older. Oh yeah. Like if we go down to like in between 1800 and 2000, it'll probably be another 10 cards, you know, like what's, there's a lot of sales, in, especially of Prism in between a thousand and 2000. Like, it's still impressive the, though. Sorry. It's still impressive though. I mean, it yeah. really is. I mean, it's, it's not, it's kind of unheard of to have uh, that many items selling yeah. for those, you know, for $1,500 plus that are yeah. outside the all-star type stuff uh, on a consistent basis right now. So it's, it's exactly. pretty impressive. Exactly. Um, okay, before we get off Prism, um, let's talk about the rock black one of one that uh, has, has surfaced. Yes, let's uh, do that. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of sort of discussion in the hobby as to what the value of that card is and uh, i put in a tweet that said is this the most valuable wrestling card of all time i guess we'll never know well i was reached out to by the gentleman that sold that card and he told me that it quote sold for a shit ton but he has to respect the buyer's privacy the buyer wants to remain remain anonymous on it and i completely understand that sure and i told him well if you could give us an idea you know, it, it, it would settle the discussion, but then I realized, no, it wouldn't, you know, it, it, we need a number. Um, yep. And, 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 uh, and, and he basically said that um, it has set a record across the board for wrestling cards. And that's about all he would say. And we know that the Andre and the Hulk all-stars sold just under $48,000. Yep. So that was the illusion that, 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 that that's what that card went for. But the interesting part of the discussion I had with this gentleman back and forth was that, he recognizes that it sucks for the wrestling card hobby that he can't disclose this price yeah. and that it doesn't hurt. It doesn't help our market at all that he's aware of a number. Um, and he knows that I, 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 you and I talk about this. That's why he reached out to me that he wishes that he could disclose it. But again, I completely respect that, you know, the rock himself could have bought it. You know, one of the rocks handlers could have bought it. You know, anybody yeah. with money um, could buy these things and I don't want to be conspicuous about it. And I completely understand but, you know, it's kind of like Flex sold a Triple H shimmer for a good deal of money, but he didn't disclose the price. And basically the conversation ends there. Not that we don't believe that it didn't happen. And I believe in, in all earnestly that, that, that this, this gentleman I was conversing with did in fact sell the Rock Black card, but without a number, there's not much for us to really talk about. You know? Correct. And, 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 and because again, anything, anything becomes speculation at that point. So, it, it, uh, it does. and when we have to start dealing with actual, you know, cold, hard facts and numbers, that's what we work with as yeah. maybe we put something, if there was a, a Guinness World Record type of, uh, of, of, of archiving of this information like that, we would put, put like a little asterisk next to that particular card, an undisclosed well, amount. Going you know, forward, kind of there's going to be one camp that believes that the Black Rock is the most valuable card of all time. And there's sure. going to be another camp of us that believe the Hulk and the Andre All-Star until we're told otherwise by sure. a real number, um, that, that that's the most valuable wrestling card of all time. You know, like if you ask me if if, if the uh, one of one Ric Flair WCW autograph surfaced, in my opinion, that could be the most valuable card of all time. Sure. We talked about Vince earlier. We talked about the the Rock Auto, you know, um, so interesting conversation there. But again, guys, uh, the card has been found. It's out there. It's been bought by somebody uh, that's likely going to hang into it for some time and is, is very pleased with his purchase. But we, we can't speak to the price of it, unfortunately. It's what it is. We move it on. Is what it is. Yep. Um, so that's it for pricing. Do you want to get into our index and see in how the market's yeah. doing? Yeah. I, uh, it was quite uh, interesting looking at this index, matter of fact. So yeah, uh, and again, you know, there there was there was a uh, card ladder showed a statistic that showed a lot of different uh, cards within the hobby down, but wrestling up. But 
don't don't necessarily get fooled by that because remember we had that magic week in April that pushed everything up. So that that's the reason why the quarter for wrestling looks particularly good. But if we look at the last month, even in our own index, and I like the way we do it because I get a better sense over a longer period of time when we discuss this back and forth as to what's happening, mm -hmm. we can sort of see what's going on. The first thing uh, we talk about is the uh, AEW Hobby Box, and that, that seemed to hold around the $200 point. Do you, do you think that that's going to be sort of the price where it sticks? Uh, it's already come down below by the time this, uh, this recording actually comes out. Um, it, 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 it's already down below that already. So uh, it, it's, it's, been, it's even in the 160 price point. Huh. Uh, I, so think, think I think, month, I think you can go to Steel City or Dave and Adams. I think they're selling for $159.99 right now. Right. And remember, guys, it's June. It's hot outside. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of people are tight financially. A lot of people are, for the first time, able to go outside and, and, and do things. So it's not surprising. Like, we know that the hobby gets quiet, surprisingly, at Christmas time, but it's yep. often quite good September, October, November. Um, this might be one of those down months in general for the hobby. And we're trying to sort of inform you guys as to where these dips may be. And, and there's a general sense that, that the numbers are down somewhat. But some of the things as we see here are, ho are holding like that hobby box. Well, I mean, the well, hobby box was sitting around the 240 price point on sure. average for, for many months. 250, it, 242, 242. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, and it, it, it took a dip in May. Yeah. Almost, almost a $40 dip in May. Yeah. And, and now here we are taking another, you know. And remember, ten, we're taking averages of nine sales a month. So we're talking a lot of boxes have been sold. Like yeah. our data, you know, it, it might not be the most scientific way that we do it, but we're getting a real sense of where that particular, because that was of interest to the hobby when that when the AW hobby box came out sure. and we've been watching it. And, you know, it's 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 dipping slightly now, but the bigger dip with that set is on the base set. And that's something you predicted last month. It, mm. it was pretty much at 75, then down to around 40. And, and you said that it was going to come down further. And this month we ended up at uh, from 45 down to 35. So, you know, not like revolution at all. It's not the, it's not the lowest point that this set's been so far. I mean, the lowest point on average was for April, which was $27. Right. Yeah, that was that was a bad month for it. So it, it bumped back itself back up with, with less sales to compare, by the way, for the month of May. Right. Uh, and that went to bump to $43. Now with the same, with even more sales in the month of June, uh, it. it's dipped back down again. Right. And, and that's a good point that when we have fewer sales on the month, it could be, uh, uh, they could keep it a little bit artificially higher because there's not that many. And remember what people do is that, oh, I'm going to buy this box, what's it worth? And they're going to look at the last few sales and that's where they're going to go. So when yep. you say that the new boxes are at 160 or 170 or wherever they're landing now, yep. that's what we're going to see more of because people are going to go back to paying 250 now, obviously, when they, they, they see what the current market value of the box is. Um, then we have the Panini base set, or sorry, the uh, Prism base set down to about 77 bucks. And as we know, um, we were calling that a buck a card for the longest time. So 200, uh, 200 card base set for about 200. Um, that's more than cut in half. And I'm sure there's room to drop there as well. Cause we talked about that earlier. There's a lot more prism stuff that hasn't been open. There's just so much base, not even about being open. There's base. just so many ways to get base yeah. cards. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a just a uh, revolution. Yeah. It's just, it's just, you know, pushed into everything that you can get, you know, you can get it in blasters, you can get it in, in uh, feeds, you can get it in hobby boxes. I mean, there's just so many different ways to get, uh prism that uh it doesn't surprise me that the base set comes down like I, I i wouldn't i wouldn't be surprised by end of year to see these base sets for around the on the 45 50 price point really yeah so I, when you start i, I wouldn't i, I wouldn't store. be surprised i mean if it sits at around 75 bucks great that's awesome uh it's still to me on the higher end when it comes to a a, a larger release for a base Good. set um but 75 bucks is a uh, pretty respectable for uh, Again. a new product it's counterintuitive to me because I would have expected on a premium release that that base set to be worth more than the set that just came out. And again, we explained why because hobby only, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. But, you know, that's that's the reality, yep. you know, that you're going to be able to get that set. Curious to see now where uh, as, as you and I have talked before offline that we've you and I have talked offline. Revolution was the set that wrestling card collectors should have been warned about. Correct. Yeah. Correct, because no one gave me a heads up that, hey, man, none of your suppliers are going to be able to give you this product and it's going to take you five or six goes to get it up here. It's like, yeah, uh, 1985 tops uh, Hulk Hogan card. It's one we've been watching now for like a year and a half. It's generally been a $50 card at time, 45. And I guess it's right in line, Tony. It's yeah. 47 and change. Yeah, you know, uh, it's it's a testament to the vintage market because the vintage yeah. market uh, is, is not going to fluctuate as much. Uh, no, that card's always in demand. 
it's always going to be in demand. And if it does fluctuate, it's usually trending upwards. So yeah. um, for it to sit there and be at a, a level of, you know, this 47, 45, $50 price point on a raw Hogan card, is not surprising. And, you know, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, I would expect that uh, it's going to be like yeah. a $75, $80, you know, on average type of cards like that. It's just, it's vintage is vintage, man. It also just speaks to how many there are. You know, of course. Obviously, tops printed uh, or peachy. Uh, there's, yeah, there's but these could also be changing them. hands. Yes. You know, it yes. could also be changing. It's not just yeah, it's a so fluid much card it. for sure. Yeah. It's a fluid card for sure because the kind of thing, there's enough of them that the master collectors have them and they haven't touched them in all those years. But now that the value's gone up, it's almost become commoditized that, hey, this yeah. is something that on, on a good day is a $50 card. And that's attractive to people that are selling yeah, a sure. card that they, you know, that, that are like guys like Zan, for example, are very clever with looking at the values of things and understanding, okay, I might take a loss on this, but I'm going to make on that. But overall, I'm moving, uh, moving things forward. Yep. Um, last thing we got, your set, the 1991 uh, WCW Impels, 1756, almost identical to the previous month. Yep. Yeah, What's nothing's really there? changing with that. You know, no. hey, you know, uh, I only print on demand. <laughs> You know what, though? There's always nine sets. There's never a month that goes by that I have to go looking for them. They're always selling. So, you know, we joke about it, but they print, they printed like Prism. They printed uh, like tell, yeah, I was going to say, you know, 1991 Impel is, 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 you know, I mean, Prism is the 1991. It's the modern yeah. day Impel. It really they, is. They, they printed a lot of them. There's no doubt about it because I don't think these are flipping around like the Hulk Hogan cards. I think people are getting them and then holding on to no, them. No, but even singles. I we, we uh, I talked about this with uh, with Zan uh, last night, as a matter of fact. Um, and we talked. I said, you know, there, there's the market sometimes is like you know, but the ball pump and dump type of thing. And I yeah. I, I remembered uh, during the height of the of, of the pandemic, there's a lot of people out there really trying to uh, shove impel graded cards down our throats and make it something. They were trying right. to really make it. A uh, this is a it's, a it's a big ticket item. You need you to get it, and it just um it, it it didn't take. No, and it it wouldn't have. We've had that conversation before about cards that really should be graded. I mean, the prices of PSA have come down a little bit now, but when we're talking fifty to seventy five dollars to grade a card, you got to be thinking about what what's the value of it. You know, sure. like I wouldn't grade. I'm not in that world, but I wouldn't grade anything less than a hundred. But I'm assuming minimum. my assumption would be that a lot of the uh, the impel stuff was probably graded during bulk submissions when it was you know ten Maybe. twelve bucks a pop. Yeah. Uh, and it's like, okay, well, for our $12 investment on my card, I could probably flip it for 25, well, 30 bucks like that. And, and answer be this, oh, great print man. Um, is the graded card worth more than the raw card? Who knows? Is a graded card worth more than a, than a, a raw card? Just of the impulse. Probably not. I don't think there's any difference. I wouldn't there. imagine it is. I really imagine there is. I think it's uh, people who got that stuff. Again, I have. I would have to assume that people are smart enough to understand that they're not going to go and pay 30 to fifty dollars to have a card right. of Impel graded to try Correct. to flip it for a couple of hundred bucks when it's really only going to no, go for that no, fifteen to thirty bucks. A Anyways, correct, correct. So nice that there's always something to talk about about that set, and it holds a special place in my heart because it was one of the first sets I ever got, and I got the binder, the stump binder, which is probably yep. worth more than the cards. Yeah, I probably. think you're right. I've oh, got a couple a of those more. binders actually. Yeah, quite a bit more. Last thing is the 2002 Royal Rumble base set. There wasn't a sale of the base set, but there was a master set, which was interesting to me. So that's the base set plus the inserts. Nothing to do with relics, nothing to do with autos. And that sold for 500, um, which I was thinking to myself, wow, if a master set's worth 500, uh, wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Um, good number. Good number. That's a great number that, for that. that. That would put those inserts. There's only a few insert sets that came with that. That would, you know, like that's putting the base set probably at around 250 to three, and then maybe uh, a couple hundred bucks for the insert sets. So and we talk about how a lot of these FLIR inserts don't seem to have high numbers, but that's another sleeper area of the hobby is some of these insert sets that came out there in FLIR era that you just don't see that much of anymore. And I mean, you had, I mean, that particular set had three levels of, of chase to go after. You had your gimmick matches. Uh, mm -hmm. You had your devastating, and then you had uh, your Royal Rumble recaps, and that was uh, it. Which, right? Just a that was it. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So those three insert sets, and those insert sets would have had what 10, 15 cards. They weren't big uh, insert sets. I don't recall. Uh, don't no, I mean I think uh, I'm, I mean, I'm going to use this handy dandy tool called WrestlingTradingCards.com. Uh, well, we they were they, this information. They, there were ten cards in the gimmick matches. There yeah. were fifteen cards in devastating, and there were ten cards in the Royal Rumble recap. There you go. So for another 35 cards, you know, 200 bucks, um, good number. And again, that that's the marquee uh, FLIR set because of the, the rookie class of that yep. year. 
which is so a great set. I mean, uh, I mean, someone's paying, someone's paying for those cards, what they're paying for. They're paying for that Cena Orton and, you know, getting a, a bonus uh, out of that. Yeah. And I think that there's going to be, as more people come into the hobby and more kids get into it and what have you. And I mentioned to you at the uh, indie event, I had a little kid running around trying to get all the promo cards that he could. And uh, I, I, someone said, oh, it's too bad there isn't a Bret Hart one, or sorry, I, um, an Undertaker one. I said, there is an Undertaker one. So where's the kid? I found the kid and I just gave him a complete set of all of them. And the kid's father couldn't believe it. He was like, oh, thanks, man. What do I owe you? I said, nothing, man. Like, just happy to do it. And the kid was excited. And I thought to myself, you know, maybe that guy's going to buy, you'd probably, you'd buy an just, impulse set one day. Yeah, maybe maybe he becomes the next, you know, set master, you know, it's like, yeah, you never he's going to take over WTC one day. <laughs> you never know. Well, I'm hoping your, your young Anthony might be that guy, but anyways. So that's it for pricing and stuff. There was one other thing I put on my, my list just to chat about, just to sort of mix it up, because we're always talking about numbers and, and where everything sits. And that, you know, one of the things that Chuck and I do is we often find these weird oddball sets, you know, the, the Indian stuff mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Chuck's done a few uh, things with Zan about some of the indie stuff and uh, the Springfield, the Simpsons, the Hasbro cards. One of the sets that I've been particularly keen on that really hasn't caught and I just want to bring attention to it, not because I have them, but I think there's something there is the Micro Brawlers figures cards. Mm -hmm. And that, that's these guys here, if you're not familiar with them. And the story with these cards is that the Micro Brawlers figures, uh, they're like these small you know, three inch figures mm -hmm. that come in, in, in plastic with a card that you can cut out on the back. And there's been about 160 of them that have cards so far. There's been way more of them of figures that are just in clear pouches that don't have the cards. But I've seen these on the secondary market slowly, slowly creep up. These are, you know, they don't look that shit hot on the back because you can see they were cut out from sure. where, where the figure was. But look at what the ice cream cards are doing. And, you know, the and, and there's some good names, like there's a Danhausen here, there's an Owen here. There's like a whole bunch of different, different variations of the Macho Man card. And uh, I just wanted to introduce these to the hobby. If you're not familiar with them and you're into stuff like ice cream cards, you're into stuff like figures cards, uh, cartoony kinds of stuff that I, I particularly like, you know, because you can only have so many wrestlers live standing uh, in one set. Uh, Micro Brawlers, they're originally put out by Pro Wrestling Tees. I think the major podcast guys uh, had a license to make a bunch of them. And the figures themselves are really cute and they look neat on the shelf. But we being card guys, I thought that I'd uh, just hold those up because I've tweeted them out a few times and they don't seem to get a lot of love. And someone said, well, maybe because it's, there's nothing on the back. But, um, you know, I, 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 I've seen them uh, increase in value. So, you know, if yeah, I'd say cool. um, it's a little more modern version of uh, like the bendables and stuff like that. Yeah. You know? but, but and we talk about those. those those bendums and uh, and they're still highly collectible. And people oh yeah, like them, I know? loved I he loved uh, the artist. Loved talking to that guy. He was a lot of fun to talk with. Like that, he was very passionate about it. So yeah, yeah, that was a good episode in particular because it's it's nice to find out these guys that uh, that actually make the cards. You know, I wish I had that talent, the talent like Adrian to actually design and do something like that. It'd be so much fun. Yeah, it's just uh, these guys. Uh, they definitely have some talent for like that. Would somebody, uh, these companies should hire these guys to come out to <laughs> make some great stuff for them. You know. Yeah, exactly. It'd be fun uh what else we got anything else we got going on no we we've covered the news we talked about revolution we did our top sales we looked at the index you know card ladder and ebay price tracker check those out guys you know because they're just another alternative to listening to us but always you know when you're in the market for something go on to 130 um point and and, and check there and if anybody knows why we might be getting a different number out of card ladder than the ebay number uh, do let us know it's probably a technical thing um, that I'm not aware of, but uh, I, I'd like to get that straight because I'd like to think that the numbers are consistent across the board when we're reporting them on a monthly basis like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, pretty much it, man. I mean, June, for the most part, outside of a few releases that came out and then uh, doing our normal uh, recap of stuff like that, it's been kind of a quiet month, really. Pretty much. Uh, which is which is nice because I mean, you just can't have banger after banger every month. I mean, people's wallets can't kind of handle that stuff. <laughs> oh, no, April, April, April was crazy. I mean, yeah. you know, just, just amount of chatter and just all of it, you know, like it, it becomes a full-time thing. Like this is supposed to be a hobby that we do for fun. Yeah. 
and you know it, it, it felt like work yeah. <laughs> april did but we got through it well so, we're gonna have uh, some, we're gonna have some fun in july for sure with the, with the national yeah. coming up I'm really next looking time we see each other we'll be you know the next time you see the two of us will be a little bit different we won't yep. be in two little boxes we'll be side by side um so that's gonna be a lot of fun we're looking forward to that and anybody that's in the area that comes out to the national do look for us we'll give more details on the dinner we'll give more details on where we're going to get together to chat about wrestling cards and all that fun stuff um but yeah if you can come out i've been to national before it's loads of fun um you know it's just a good time and hey this is in atlantic city they got a, a boardwalk and a beach there apparently yeah, i mean uh it's gonna be my first one since god uh 2000 i think it was whenever whenever the last time they were in anaheim california that was the last time i ever long time ago i went 2010 when i did the price guy just to sort of that's right see what was going on in for real and uh yeah it was a lot of fun yeah so i'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people there um and uh you know who may i have some surprises who knows maybe have oh, yeah. some things to you know <laughs> you never know uh, we'll keep it interesting that's for sure yeah hit us up and uh if you guys uh, want to talk some wrestling cards you know we'd be love to talk wrestling cards with you guys but uh paul how can everybody find you uh twitter card underscore guide the website is the wrestling card price guide.com and you sir uh wrestling trading cards.com we also have a link to your site as well and the links paid for us yeah um i I've, I've, all the time i'm always quoting uh, and referencing people to your website all the time for pricing you, information like that because Likewise, uh, obviously um you know people ask like what's this worth i'm like well that's not really my thing you know check out this and link them right to yeah. it like that. and remember worth is a relative concept you know market really changes day to day um we we give lows we give highs it's it's not exact science i mean shit even with the real data I got yeah. discrepancies. So, you know, it's that kind of world we live in, guys. Yep. So uh, check us out on uh, wrestlingtradingcards.com. Uh, all the links to all of our social media can be found on the bottom of every page. Uh, you know, check out the, our YouTube channel, subscribe, like, share, do all those kind of things. And comments, man. Tell us if uh, what segments of this show you like, you know, uh, things, you like. You wanna, things you want to know more, uh, what you want to know more about, uh, what we're not doing right, you know, uh, what we'd like to hear more about. But uh, check it all out, man. Spread the word. Share. We're always about, I know Paul and I especially, that's why we do these things together, um, is to share the knowledge, get information out there. It kind of irks me a little bit sometimes when I, there's people out there, and I don't want to get too much into it. It's a whole episode, and uh, last night I was already in a mood, so I don't want to carry mm -hmm. on last night. Uh, there's just people out there and, and that have information for things that I wish were more forthcoming with that information, because yeah. all it does is benefit the hobby. Uh, yeah. knowing more about something, how it was released, you know, was it a magazine? I mean, uh, if you know print runs, if you know, you know, who made it, you know, how much in the set, you have a checklist. Hey, you if, if you've got deep pockets and you just bought a wrestling card that shattered the record, don't be shy. Let us know. We're well, only going to, we're only going to make you a hero here. We're only going to yeah. be talking about you for the rest of time. Yeah, you pretty know. much. I mean, you know, some, 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 some people, you know, I got to respect their privacy. But, but I, 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 it, I do respect but, the privacy you know, aspect of it, but, uh, you know. But what I, what, what I, what I did like was a sort of acknowledgement was that the guy that sold the card really wished that he could have disclosed that number to us because he gets that, you know, it settles a lot of discussion, doesn't it? You know, it does. what that, what, what that is. Is it a $50,000 card? He says it is, um, you know, plus, or is it what I would have thought it was, which would be less, but what do I know? You know, yeah. and until you have real, real data, um, you know, it's all just uh, a, a lot of speculation. Yep. So uh, you guys have comments about that? Put it in the comment yeah. section, talk about that. Let us know what you think. Um, uh, just engage guys, just, just yeah. engage with each other, help educate everybody. And, um, you know, we've got two great resources right here at your fingertips to help you out with, uh, you know, um, uh, knowing the game here, man. And if you can engage with us, engage with us in person, Atlantic City, end of the month, July 27th through the 30th, we're there. And make sure you come out and check out Top Rope Con in September as well, topropecon.com, uh, or you can go topropewrestlingcon.com. It links you both to the same places. Uh, September 16th and 17th in Tampa, Florida. Uh, great lineup of people that are scheduled to come there. Uh, we got uh, a good selection of vendors coming there, selling all kinds of different uh, things. Fun. And, uh, if you want to set up, by all means, you know, go to the website, uh, fill out the application. It's like cheap, like 175 for two days, yeah. or 200 bucks for two days, Morgan. you know, uh, to go and have some fun, man, and uh, hang out with a bunch of uh, wrestling personalities and collectors and check it out, man. I, I got nothing else for you this, uh, this time, man. See you at the National, everybody. We'll see you next time, guys. <laughs>